It's obvious that the news media has been waging a disinformation war against President Trump since the day he won the 2016 election, something I chronicled in my book The True Story of Fake News, but the entertainment industry has also dedicated much of their creative efforts to continuously casting him and everything he does in a negative light by weaving anti-Trump narratives into the plot lines of countless television dramas and sitcoms to ensure that as many people as possible are inundated with the message. Stephen Colbert went so far as to produce an entire animated series for HBO called Our Cartoon President, which is dedicated to mocking him. Before becoming president, the media used to love Donald Trump. For decades, he was a symbol of wealth and success, and throughout the 1980s and 90s made cameos in dozens of TV shows and movies like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Spin City, WrestleMania, Home Alone 2, Zoolander, and more. But all that changed after the 2016 election, when the liberal media industrial complex launched a war against him, hoping to de derail his administration and prevent him from cleaning up the corruption in Washington, D.C. and bringing the government gravy train to a halt. ABC's sitcom Blackish revolves around an African-American family and the issues that they face as a black middle-class family in America today. And shortly after the 2016 election, there was an episode about how terrified everyone was about Trump's victory and how awful it would be for black people. For his entire professional life, Donald Trump has been a friend of the black community and had been given awards for all that he did. Every leader in the black community, from Jesse Jackson to Al Sharpton to Muhammad Ali, had sung praises of him for decades. But as soon as he came close to becoming the president, the media started gaslighting how racist he was, hoping to get black people to turn against him. In an episode of The Simpsons, Homer and Lisa walk past a TV news crew that's interviewing a group of men, one of them wearing a red MAGA hat. And Kent Brockman, the reporter, then says that he's speaking with three blue-collar men who voted for Trump and asked them how they feel, and one of them replies, please stop interviewing us, as if he's ashamed that he voted for President Trump and realized that he made a big mistake. Kent Brockman here interviewing three blue-collar men who voted for Trump. How do you feel now? Please stop interviewing us. Never. In an episode of the revived Murphy Brown series, a character who is a reporter in the show was depicted as being attacked by a group of rabid Trump supporters because of their hatred of the media. While promoting the show, Candace Bergen, who plays Murphy Brown, said that Donald Trump winning in 2016 was the motivation to bring the show back. The original series, which aired from 1988 to 1998, depicted Murphy Brown as an investigative journalist and a news anchor, so producers thought with President Trump's war on media raging, they could bring the show back and have Murphy Brown working to expose him. When NBC brought back Will and Grace in 2017, after initially ending the series in 2006, one episode depicted a character walking into a cake shop because she was hosting a birthday party for the president and wanted a cake that said, Make America Great Again on it. And while while ordering, she makes a comment about how she'll be serving white Russians at the party, a reference, of course, to the Democrats' obsession with the Trump campaign supposedly in their brain-dead mind conspiring with the Russians to steal the 2016 election, adding that she couldn't reveal who was on the guest list because, well, <laughs> you know why. The baker then refused to bake the cake, saying that the phrase, make America great again, is racist. Even The X-Files has included anti-Trump messages. The series, which originally aired from 1993 to 2002, was revived in 2016 for a few more seasons. And in the January 2018 season premiere when it kicked off, the cigarette-smoking man started narrating footage of President Trump's inauguration, which then cuts to a montage of clips including Vladimir Putin and Americans at voting booths while he talks about the horrible state of the country. In one episode, Mulder discovers that someone trying to silence him as a Russian contractor who was given special security clearance by the executive branch of the government, insinuating, of course, that the president is trying to get him whacked. As you know, every few months throughout the first term of the Trump administration, the mainstream media repeated the same news cycle about the possibility that President Trump may be removed from office by enacting the 25th Amendment, which allows the expulsion of the president if the majority of the cabinet agree that he's mentally unfit for office, which would result in the Vice President taking over, and such pipe dreams have been fueled by the gossip columnist Michael Wolf and his tabloid trash books that were, of course, hailed by the mainstream media for his supposed anonymous sources inside the White House who said that the possibility was being discussed every day. The left's desperate hope that the 25th Amendment could end their Trump nightmare caused the issue to get written into the plots of various 
political dramas on television, allowing those with Trump derangement syndrome to have the emotional satisfaction for a fleeting moment that it had actually happened. And these plots uh, really served to plant seeds in people's minds in the audience, hoping that they would grow to increase the discussions and the pressure about actually doing such things to President Trump. The Showtime series Homeland, a spy thriller about the Department of Homeland Security, is just one of numerous shows to include this plot point. Before President Trump, such a topic was never addressed in a political drama or thriller. The 25th Amendment was just an obscure provision few people had ever heard of, but it's included in the Constitution in case the president becomes mentally incapacitated. Democrats, however, hoped to use it as a political weapon. CBS's political drama Madam Secretary did the same thing, and in the show, after the cabinet voted in favor of removing the president by enacting the 25th Amendment, he addressed the nation, announcing that he would be stepping down and thanked them for putting the country first. Kiefer Sutherland's designated Survivor Series on ABC also aired a 25th Amendment fantasy where his vice president plotted to invoke the power, hoping to have him removed as president. Michael J. Fox even guest starred as the prosecutor for the cabinet, which ultimately failed in removing Sutherland, but succeeded in making an entire episode about the 25th Amendment, which was the whole point in the first place. Even the CW's superhero series Supergirl, a derivative of the Superman franchise that focuses on Superman's cousin, also aired an episode where Kara, aka Supergirl, who, like Clark Kent, works as a reporter, published an expose on the president conspiring with arch-villain Lex Luthor, resulting in the cabinet invoking the 25th Amendment to have him removed. As the characters are sitting around watching the news about the situation, one of them turns to Kara, congratulating her and praising the power of the press, and she replies that even though she thought they were dark days and they would never get through it, they kept chipping away until they brought the truth to light. Hollywood's anti-Trump and anti-conservative propaganda goes a lot further than this, however, and it gets a lot darker. They've been inundating audiences with leftist propaganda day in and day out for four years now, hoping to convince people that President Trump needs to go and trying to silence those of us who support him. And next week, if you haven't voted already, you're gonna have to get to the polls no matter what and cast your vote for the president and send a message to the Hollywood puppet masters and the liberal media industrial complex that we reject everything that they stand for, that we're immune to their lies, that we don't worship celebrities or care whatsoever what they think is best and we're not gonna let them destroy our culture or our country or our lives without a fight. If you like my serious little presentation here, you'll really enjoy my new book, Hollywood Propaganda, How TV, Movies, and Music Shape Our Culture. Lots of stuff in there that I can't get into here on YouTube for obvious reasons, but things that people should know. So order it in paperback on amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores, Kindle, Google Play, iBooks, or Nook. And of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below. So head on over there and check it out. <laughs>